Hello and welcome to another video on fractions. Uh, in this particular video, I am going to do some more sample problems related to fractions. And specifically, we'll look at some problems around how to make a whole from two different fractions. And this is part of, of me being able to give you some more intuitions around, or some more intuition rather, around how fractions work. So we're going to do different kinds of problems on fractions so that at the end of it, you really get a good sense for how fractions work. So the first problem says 1 third, 1 over 3, and now I have two red squares. I want you to, want to fill in what's in these squares, make one whole. So the question is, what do you need to add to 1 third in order to make one whole? Well, let's think of it this way. Let, let me draw um, a rectangle. Imagine I took a rectangle. Okay, here's my rectangle. Okay, and imagine I divide this rectangle up into three pieces. So let me divide it up into three approximately equal pieces. So here they are. Okay. Now the next question is, is what does what does one third represent in this case? What what's one third of this rectangle? Well the way to think of one third of a rectangle is you can take part of the rectangle and you can we just shade it in. And so here I for example have shaded in one third of the rectangle, one out of three pieces. Now how much more do I need to shade in to get the whole rectangle? Well what I have to shade in to get the rest of the rectangle is these other two squares. So let's let me shade this one in. Okay. And I'm shading in these two additional squares. So I've shaded in one square and now a second square. Okay, so now I've taken my initial rectangle, I divided it up into three, so I have one third um, of the rectangle, which is represented by these this one square here. Okay, and to get the remaining part of the rectangle, I have to look at these two green squares. And these two green squares constitute two, so in other words, two squares out of a total of three squares. Okay? So one third and two thirds together make one whole. Another way to think about it is if I took a rectangle and divided it up into three equal sized pieces, you would need all three pieces to get back the whole rectangle. If I gave you just one of those pieces, you would also need the other two. So you would need two more pieces out of three to get back one whole. So one third and two thirds together make one whole. Okay, let me try another problem with you. Hopefully that made sense. So one fourth and again blank over blank make one whole. How would we solve this problem? So let's again start and we'll, we'll draw a nice rectangle. Or how about, let's draw something. Let's, let's draw a, a square. Let's draw a square here. And let's imagine this is a square. And I'm going to divide the square up into four equal sized pieces. I can do it many ways, but how about I divide it up this way? Let's say I divide it up into half and then half again. Okay, and let's imagine these four pieces are, are the same size. So I've got one, two, three, four pieces that are the same size. Now, what does one fourth represent? So, one fourth will represent just one of these pieces. So, imagine this one piece right here. So one piece is represented here, and this one piece represents one-fourth of the overall square. To get the rest of the square, how many more pieces do I need? Well, the answer should be three, because I need these three other pieces. So let, let's, let's shade them in, so you get you can kind of picture the whole square. So this, this square is composed of four small squares, okay? And you can break up four small squares into one square, and then three more squares. Okay, so these represent three squares out of four. Okay, and that one square that's initially there, this square, represents one square out of four. So you can think of one whole as being one out of four plus three out of four, and that gives you kind of all four out of four. If you have one out of four and three out of four, you get four out of four. Uh, put differently, if I took a square and divided it up into four pieces, that are all equal size, and I gave you all those four pieces, you would be able to reconstruct the whole square. Um, so if I gave you one piece initially, I would need to give you three more pieces in order for you to get to one whole. Um, I'm going to keep doing problems. I think this is starting to make sense to you, but if it's not, I'm going to do a couple more problems until it really does make sense. So let's look at this problem. Three eighths and blank over blank make a whole. So we're going we're to try again the same way we did the previous problem. I'm going to draw out a uh, 
a shape and I'm going to divide it up into eight pieces. So let's, let's draw a nice, how about a nice long rectangle. You know, the hard part for me will be to come up with a way to divide it up into eight roughly equal sized pieces. Let's imagine that these are all equal size. I'm going to divide it up into half. Okay, into half again. And I'll divide the, the halves again into half. And what you'll notice after I do all this is I've got eight pieces. And if you don't believe me, let, let's actually count them out, okay? So we've got, um, I'll count them out up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. Let's imagine these are all about the same size. Okay, now three eighths. How would I get three eighths from this? I would have to take three of these eight pieces to get three eighths. So let me kind of shade in one piece, two pieces, and three pieces. I've got one piece, two pieces, and three pieces shaded in. And together, these three pieces give you three over eight. So three eighths of the rectangle can be represented by taking three pieces out of eight. Now, what do I need to get the remaining parts? Well, if you look at this this rectangle, you'll notice that there are one, two, three, four, five pieces remaining. And let's let's shade them in. I'm gonna shade them in. How about I shade them in in, in a different with a different line orientation. So I'm, I'm having the lines go in a slightly different orientation. So one, two, three, four and five. So now I've got five pieces shaded, again out of a total of eight. Okay, and so if you take the initial three pieces and these other five pieces, you'll get eight pieces total out of eight. And that's how you get a whole. So you three eighths and five eighths together make a whole. And again, another way to think about it is if I took a rectangle and I made it into eight pieces, you would need to get all eight pieces back to be able to reconstruct the original rectangle. If I gave you three pieces initially, you would need five more pieces to make a hole. We'll do one last problem before I close out this video, and hopefully again this is starting to make more and more sense, but let's do one more problem just in case it's not making sense. Okay, So five, six, and again blank over blank make a hole. So let, let's try this again. Let, let's let's uh, think of a good shape to start with, and let's, uh, how about um, I draw uh, hmm, what should I draw here? I'll draw another rectangle. Let, let, let me be kind of boring here and just draw another rectangle. I know I've drawn a bunch of these rectangles already, but it's a little bit easier to draw a rectangle for me because uh, I can at least draw it in a way that might lead to equal size pieces being drawn. So um, how do I draw six equal size pieces? Let's, well, let's start off. Maybe I can draw three pieces here. So I've got three pieces, and I'm going to divide these three up again into each of these into a half, and so I'm going to get six pieces total. And if you don't believe me, let's just count this out. One, two, three, four, five, six pieces. Now, how many, how much of this is constituted by five, six? So I've got, let, let, me, let me call this as one, two, three, four, five. These five pieces will represent five, six total. So let me kind of shade that in. Three, four, five. And now you get the hang. What's remaining? There's only one piece remaining. So this this one last piece is what I would need to get the, the rest of this rectangle in. So um, this part here represents one sixth. Okay, and the, the beginning part of the, the the other parts of the rectangle, this part, these parts right here, constitute five sixths. So five sixths and one sixth together make one hole. So five six and one six make a hole. And again, another way to think about that is if I took a rectangle, and if I divided it up into six pieces, um, you would need to get all six in order to be able to get the hole back. So if I gave you five pieces initially, you would need one remaining piece to be able to get a sixth. So before I said this would be the last problem, you know what? I'm going to do one last problem. This time I'm, I'm really going to make it one last problem. Again, this is just to, to really drill it home. If you're getting this already, you can ignore this problem. If, you, if you're still not sure about how to solve these problems, feel free to, to watch me do it just one more last time. And, and again, this time I'm going to do uh, two-fifths and blank over blank make a hole. So let's see, what, what can I, how can I divide something up into five equal size pieces in, in a nice clean 
uh, clean way. So again, I'll be boring here. Let me uh, let me draw a nice rectangle for you. Okay, and uh, let's make it. Uh, Okay, so imagine I've got this rectangle, I've broken it up into five pieces, and, and let's count this out. One, two, three, four, five. Now, two-fifths would be represented by shading two of these pieces in. Okay, so this would give me two over five. Okay, and what remains um, are three more pieces, so that these are these three pieces, and let me let me shade them in. Let me uh, let's shade them in this way. So I've got one, two, three more pieces, so three pieces again out of five. And together, these two out of five and the three out of five together give me back the whole. So two fifths and three fifths make a whole. And again, another way to think about that is if I took a rectangle, divided it up into five pieces, you would need to get all five pieces to get back the original rectangle. So if I gave you two pieces up front, you would need three more pieces out of the five to make a whole. Okay, so I know I've done a bunch of problems. I, I know this is probably repetitive, but hopefully these problems are giving you more and more intuition and more and more understanding about how fractions work. Uh, thanks a lot for watching this video, and we'll, we'll be doing more videos on fractions in the future, and hopefully you'll be able to join me for them. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon.